So Polaroids are useful because, well, for sunglasses applications, you have the light from the sky. Light from the sky is actually polarized. Okay, and then the reason for that is you have light coming in from the sun. Well, first of all, why is the sky blue? What's that? Reflection from space? Re radiation. Okay, but yeah, re radiation, right? Re radiation. The what's what's what is re radiating? What is in the the atmosphere? The the molecules. The okay uh, in the air, right? Nitrogen, oxygen, and various other molecules in the air, which are being affected by the radiation from the sun, and they are re radiating. Now the blue color comes from something we mentioned a little bit early on, which is that when you're talking about acceleration, remember we said, we said that the, uh, the positions of these charges, these electrons essentially in the, in the molecules, are oscillating sinusoidally. Well, we're worried about the acceleration, right? So if we take the derivative of the position, we get a factor of omega, which is the angular frequency. If we take the p derivative of the velocity, we get another factor of omega. So we have the amplitude times omega squared times sine of omega t. And no one can read that because this marker is dead. But I have a uh, omega squared here. And omega is the angular frequency, which is proportional to the frequency of the radiation, right? So higher frequencies are bluer, right? Lower frequencies toward the red end of the spectrum. So the acceleration, which is important for the re-radiation, right, because it's due to accelerated charges, we're going to get a larger uh, acceleration for higher frequencies. And so we tend to see more concentration of blue than uh, any other colors, right? The blue dominates. The sky is blue, and it also is polarized, because if I'm standing here on the Earth, Okay, and I'm looking straight up in the sky, and here's the sun. And the sun's emitting radiation in all directions. So let's look at an air molecule up here. So here comes light from the sun. And again, that light is not originally polarized. It could be uh, E rad could be up or down. It could be in or out. So I'll draw that as a circle or an X that way. And this comes in, and here's an air molecule. And so the electrons in the air molecule could be accelerated upward or downward, or they could be accelerated inward or out of the, of the board. But if I'm looking at the re-radiation from this air molecule, and now here's the source, and the R vector is pointing down towards me. If this air molecule accelerates downward or upward, am I going to detect that radiation? Or is there going to be any radiation? Now, because there is no radiation along the direction of acceleration, okay? So if it accelerates up or down, I don't see any re-radiation. But if it accelerates into or out of the board, I do. And that's polarized light, because that light is polarized either into or out of the board. So I'm seeing polarized light from the sky. And if I have sunglasses that are set up to cancel out that particular direction of polarization, I can greatly reduce the amount of light entering my eye. Okay? So, and there's all sorts of other various applications for, for polarized light. But uh, that's one of the most common ones. Okay? Questions? All right. What else do we want to talk about here? Um, talked about polarizers. We talked about why the sky is blue. Uh, okay, let's let's see. Do we have any other questions here? We okay. We already talked about this. Why the re radiation? Or why the light bulb doesn't light up? Uh, let's try this one. This is a good one. This is just on simple idea of re radiation. You have here a pulse of electromagnetic radiation, and the original radiated electric field is pointing downward. And the whole pulse is moving in the negative x direction. And there happens to be an electron at location A. So here's what's going to happen. 
This pulse is confined only between these dotted lines. This pulse comes in and it's going to cause this charge to accelerate. But once this charge accelerates, it's going to emit radiation in all directions, including toward location B. So what we're going to do is find the direction of E radiative at location B due to the re-radiation from the original or from the electron. Okay, so it's a two-step process. You've got to figure out the acceleration of the electron, then you've got to figure out the direction of ERAD due to that electron at location B. So let's try that out, see if you can do that. Okay, well, we've got a little bit of confusion here. We have one popular answer in answer number two. This is a multi, there's a lot of steps here, a lot of steps you need to think about because we need to think about the acceleration of the electron and then we need to think about the direction of the radiative electric field due to that acceleration. So here's our original pulse, right? Pulse is confined to just this region. So notice that the original pulse is not going to be detected at location B. We're confining it just to that region. So there's B and there is uh, there's A over here, right? So here comes this E radiative and it's propagating in that direction. So that's the direction of C. And so we have an electron here. So sometime later E radiative reaches this electron and it's going to accelerate in what direction? Straight down? Straight up, right? Straight up because it's a negative charge. So we have a force upward and that's the direction of acceleration. Okay? We now have a charge accelerating. It's going to radiate in all directions except along the line of acceleration. So we go through the usual steps of finding the direction of E radiative due to that accelerated charge. We draw an R vector that points from where to where? A to B. That's R. We draw an axis that is perpendicular to R, which is along that way, right? And so A perpendicular is which direction? Uh, up and to the right, direction two, direction two. So this is A perpendicular. Okay, and then the E radiative is going to be, when it, when it reaches location B, E radiative will be same direction because negative Q times A perpendicular, right? So a negative times a negative charge gives us an E radiative that sometime later, it's going to take some time to reach location B, but this E re radiative electric field is going to be pointing in direction two, which was the most popular answer, but not unanimous by any means. So, so if you had a hard time doing this, go over this, okay, because it will be on the final exam. Uh, so you should make sure you know it. All right, let's, uh, let's see, how much time we have? Let's, let's take the quiz. So here we have a diagram. In, in this diagram, we have an electron at the origin here. Uh, at time t equals zero, the electron begins to accelerate in this direction at 4 times 10 to the 16th meters per second squared. And the angle of the acceleration from the y axis here is 30 degrees. And so sometime later, and it's not going to be 1 times 10 to the minus 8 seconds later, just say sometime later. Electromagnetic radiation is detected at location P, which is 400 meters above the electron along the y axis. What is the radiative electric field vector detected at location P? And I'll rewrite the equation on the board. Yeah, it should be six, should be six, uh, and the, again, the A perpendicular is pointing in the positive X direction, right? So we know when, we're, when the radiation reaches P, it's going to be in the positive X direction because you have negative times a negative in that direction, and if you find the A perpendicular component correctly, 
which is going to be based on the sine of that angle, you should be able to figure out the magnitude of the field. Okay.